It's a story about two salesmen in the 1900s, and they were sent to a remote village to see if they had an opportunity to sell shoes there. And the first one sent a telegram back to the company, and he said, the situation is hopeless. Stop. They don't wear shoes. <laughs> and the second one wrote, glorious opportunity. Stop. They don't have any shoes yet. <laughs> so today's talk is about power and possibilities. And this story is an example of different perspectives and how they create possibilities for us. Authenticity is powerful, plain and simple. A life lived out loud is made possible by showing up authentically. Vulnerability becomes the starting point of that authenticity, and it opens up people's judgment. It opens their judgment, and it paves the way for each of us to understand our creative power, both individually and collectively. And we are then able to form an awareness that we have the ability each one of us has the ability to change and transform. We are not stuck. And we need to know that housed inside of us is that ability to bring everything we have to life. Think about that. We are empowered. Each one of us is empowered to embrace new possibilities, to believe and to know through our willingness to be authentic and to think outside the box. We set off a chain reaction that permeates everything that crosses our path, and we get to own our own power. Some of the ways we give away our personal power is caring too much what other people think. I'm one of those, I think. Unnecessarily apologizing, thinking that we have to do things to make everybody else happy thinking that everybody needs to like us. You know, isn't that funny that we really do feel like we want everybody to like us and we forget that we are unique. We're individuals. We are unique individuals and we have our own inherent value and we have our own beauty and our own unique gifts. My gifts are not the same as Jess's. And often we forget the most important relationship in our lives is our relationship with ourselves, not with someone else. And that can be a huge realization for us when we realize that our relationship with ourselves is very important for those of us who have spent our lives trying to be people pleasers. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can relate to that. And so, no one has been able to define that infinite power within, but the time is now. The time is now for each of us to own our power and live a spiritually fulfilling life. So power is quite a word. It's a word like you feel like you have to say out loud. Why don't you try it? Power. power. Yeah, power. power. So what does that mean to you, power? To some people, it means bombs and armies and all of those kinds of things. But what about this? And we're going to say this together, too. There is a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. There's a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. And we can say it often, and we can mean it. There's a power for good in the universe. In Discover, the book Discover a Richer Life, we're told that the keys to power are love, gratitude, and play. Think about that. One of the keys to power is play. The keys to power are the most powerful way to bring your life right now into alignment with the life you want to live. They're so simple. Any child could follow them, aren't they? Love, gratitude, and play. And each key unlocks a power within you. Looking for things you love keeps you in the present moment. 
being grateful for what you've had in the past and what you have in this moment and what you expect to have and what you're affirming in your future also brings forth love. Play with your imagination. <laughs> Play with your imagination and feel it with all your heart because your imagination puts into, into motion the power of attraction, the law of attraction. Charles Fillmore said, life should be a journey of jubilation. It could be interpreted to be willing to let life be. You know, we don't have to, we, you and I, are the universe celebrating itself within us. Think about that. The universe is celebrating itself within you. It is a magnificent and curious experience for us to have, isn't it? The universe celebrating itself. So what does it mean to celebrate yourself? What does it mean to you? It means to honor yourself, to appreciate yourself. And as Ernie would say, get that bloated nothingness out of the way and allow yourself to celebrate yourself. Allow life to express itself in you and as you. Amazing. So let us be still for just a moment. Close your eyes and take a deep breath. And listen to your heartbeat. Feel your pulse and feel that aliveness in every cell and fiber of your being. You can feel it, can't you? The universe celebrating itself through you. It is telling you that you are alive. You are whole and that you are constantly being renewed. You are a fabulous being, unique. And no one has ever been exactly like you are. And no one will ever again be exactly the way that you are. So in Living the Science of Mind, it says, personality is the flowering of the spirit within us, the coming forth of a secret relationship that we all hold to God. So the person who finds him or herself in God and with God will discover at the center of their being something that is not only human, but it's also divine. We are divine. And finding this is like exploring a new land the country existed before you discovered it, but there are heights and depths that you have never experienced. You're an explorer. You get to explore the depths of your soul. And when we find our true center in the divine, we discover new strength. We discover new inspiration. And we get to dive off the deep end into the truth. And we get to discover our own power, our own spiritual power. According to Forbes, there are steps that we can take to own our power, and among them are acknowledging your aspirations and seeking mentors who can help you and support you. Use powerful affirmations and don't let the negative self-talk undermine you. Have you ever really stopped and listened to your self-talk? So how about telling someone what you're going to do and accomplish, and then under your breath you think, like, that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, maybe when pigs fly. But we are not aware often of our negative thoughts. So what we need to do is listen to ourselves. Listen to yourself carefully and replace those negative thoughts with positive affirmations. You get to be your own best friend. You get to be your own advocate, and you get to speak up and say, cancel, <laughs> I am whole, perfect, and complete. It's also okay to acknowledge your fears and allow yourself to be vulnerable, but face your fears and ask for help if you need it. How many of us have a difficult time asking for help when we need it? And we can listen and learn from other people. Take time for your physical needs and your spiritual needs and spend time alone in prayer and in meditation. Brene Brown in The Gifts of Imperfection Imperfection says spirituality is recognizing and celebrating that we are all inextricably connected to each other by a power greater than all of us. 
and that our connection to that power and to one another is grounded in love and compassion. So there it is again. There is a power in the universe, and we can use it. Do you like going new places? Does anybody here like going new places, discovering new things? Well, the first person who finds themselves in God will discover God at the center of their being, something that is both human and divine. Finding this is like that. It's like exploring a new land, going somewhere where we've never been before. The country existed before we discovered it. But there are heights and depths that we have never experienced. So going within, going within to find the center of the divine. And when we do that, we get to discover a new strength, a new inspiration, a new power, and new possibilities. When we dive off the deep end of truth, we will discover our own spiritual power. You are a powerful being. And as we celebrate ourselves, our true self, it blossoms in our relationships with others as well. It opens up new possibilities. Centers for Spiritual Living has a global vision, and I'm going to quote a couple of paragraphs from that. We see a world in which each and every person lives in alignment with their highest spiritual principle, emphasizing unity with God and connection with each other, a world in which individually and collectively we are called to a higher state of consciousness and action. We envision humanity awakening to its spiritual magnificence and discovering the creative power of thought, a world where each and every person discovers their own personal power and their ability to create an individual life that works within a world that works for everyone. We get to create our own life that works within the world that works for everyone. And this excerpt from the Global Vision speaks to the individual and the collective power and the possibilities that are brought about when we practice being our true self, when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Through the creative process, which science of mind teaches, we are able to activate that creative nature that's within each of us, the creative nature of life itself. And this activation opens the door to infinite possibilities. Tapping into your power, making possible evolution and transformation. Imagine that, if you will, a world in which each person lives in connection with the other, with God and with spiritual principle. Wouldn't that be a wondrous place for us to live in a world where we are connected? So Napoleon Hill told us that whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And I think he's talking about the power of possibility, whatever the mind can conceive and believe. The ideas don't have to be, the idea is things don't always have to be the way they've always been. We're a choice. We can open our eyes and we can open our minds to infinite possibilities. We get to create a space for conversation and transformation. Vulnerability becomes something that is braced and honored rather than something to be avoided or diminished. It's okay if I let you see who I really am. Maybe. <laughs> the power of collective transformation is made possible through this little seed of vulnerability. You know, if you see who I really am, will you still like me? Through fostering vulnerability in our family of origin or our family of choice, or our communities in our world, we bring to the surface real change, dynamic change. The possibility of transformation becomes more, more than just words or ideologies, but a reality for us through our willingness, when we're willing to be alive, to be vulnerable, to be in a relationship of any kind is to be vulnerable. To be in community is vulnerable. What if somebody doesn't like me? You know, power, possibility, and transformation can only occur when we support our vision, whatever your vision is. When we believe we, you and I, 
we have the ability to bring forth good. We can bring good into our own lives and to the lives of others. That's within our capability. Mark Nepo in the Book of Awakening says, quote, the sweetness of living comes to us when the very humanness we regret and try to hide, our seeming flaws and shameful secrets, are worked by time and nature into a honey all of their own, unquote. So to live in your power means that you don't apologize for who you are or what you want. You are unapologetically you. To live in your power is to live an authentic life of purpose, meaning, and love. It is to be the best human that you can be. Ernest Holmes says, life is not just something to be endured. It is something to be lived in joy, a fullness without limit. Something to be lived in joy. There's moments that that kind of escapes some of us, I think, and we need to rethink that life is to be lived in joy, and living a more spiritual life blesses not only us, but it blesses every aspect of our life, and it feeds us, and it nourishes us, and it inspires us, and it helps us to reach our highest and best, even when that can be somewhat uncomfortable. It's not always easy, but divine wisdom flows to us, and through us and guides us, doesn't it? We learn to see the divine in the ordinary. We become a center of love and we allow that love to radiate to all that we encounter. We get to see the divine in the ordinary. You look at a flower, look at the creatures. I like to watch the squirrels, you know to see the divine and the ordinary, we need to realize that spirit is our source of fulfillment. Spirit is our force. So I have some tips from a Buddhist monk, and he says, give gratitude. Be grateful you have green, clean water to drink. Be grateful you woke up this morning. Be grateful you got to eat today. Be grateful often for everything. All the answers come from within. The universe will open the door, but you need to walk through it. Think about that. The universe will open the door. You need to walk through it. Failure equals growth, he says. This is a lesson that very few people understand. Failure equals growth. Making mistake is a learning process and a precious one at that. Failures can happen when we're vulnerable and we can learn from them and we can grow from them and we can become more from them. Failures can happen and we get to accept that and move on. Accept that and move on because nothing, nothing is permanent. The only thing that's constant is change. And when you can learn to embrace change, beautiful things begin to happen. Beautiful things begin to shift in our lives. Shift happens, you know. <laughs> Patience can be difficult for some of us to achieve. I can speak for myself here. Patience can be difficult. So don't allow things to unsettle you. Do you allow things to push your buttons? Hmm. Um, they didn't install that button. They just found it, mm -hmm. so it's up to you. Yeah, it's don't give your power away. Don't give in to your fears and your insecurities. Don't listen to that internal naysayer, and we all have them, because happiness starts within, doesn't it? Happiness is based on all sides of life, not just the spiritual. Family and friends, music, books, hobbies, all of these are part of your journey as well as your spiritual awareness. And once you reach happiness within, it manifests out. And you create happiness for others as well. And people and things that you come in contact with make your life worth living, don't they? They make your life worth living and be present. How present are you right in this moment? Are you thinking about what you're doing later today after church? 
Be present in this moment as it's the only moment you can be sure of. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow may never come. This moment is the only moment you can be sure of. So let's look at what happens day to day from a place of power and a place of possibility. Let's look below the surface and see how it fits in with your dance with the divine. Look below the surface and see how it fits in. Each day brings us new insights and new transformations and new opportunities for growth. Each day we know exactly where we are supposed to be. We're not always there. But we have learning experiences that we need to have. All of us need to learn so we can open our minds and our hearts to this inner wisdom. It will guide us magnificently through our lives when we listen with an open mind and an open heart. Day to day to day. Power, possibility, and transformation can only occur when we are willing to bring the wholeness to life. It becomes incumbent on us and on our communities to do this in ways that support our vision. So what is your vision and what are you doing to support it? To do so in ways that brings forth the reality of a world that works for everyone. We get to open the gateway to power and possibility. It calls us to be who we are, create space for others to do the same, and hold on, hold on for that exciting adventure. It's kind of like the, yeah, a, a ride in the park, right? It's that exciting adventure of transformation. So I'm going to close this with a one sentence affirmation, and I'm going to ask you to repeat it. I step into the power and the possibility that vulnerability brings. I step into the power and possibility that vulnerability brings. So please join me in prayer. Sweet, sweet spirit, Father, Mother, God, that whole and holy presence in which we live and breathe and have our being, that same presence that supports the planets and the stars and the entire universe. God, the good, omnipotent. God was health and wholeness and light and love and peace and joy and power and possibilities. What I know is there is absolutely nothing outside of God, nothing. Therefore, I am one with that whole and holy presence, one with the one, one with power and possibility, one with life and love and joy, one with creativity, so as I move through the ensuing week, what I know is that we move through it filled with that powerful presence of spirit, open to the possibilities that present themselves to us, willing to become all that we can be, filled with light, filled with love, and allowing spirit to guide us and i'm grateful i'm grateful for that power and that strength of spirit that guides us and holds us and creates the good for us i am grateful for the opportunity that we have to come together in community i simply release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law which always always and only says yes please join me in affirming and so it is. Amen.